Hi there, it's Charles from the future. Two quick things to address before we get started with today's Gold Squadron Gaze episode. The first is that in the episode we do some speculation on Kamal Nanjiani's character in Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, we recorded this episode on the 19th. Literally the next day he did an interview where he talked about who he's actually playing. It's a completely original character named Haja. It's like a con man type deal. Uh, so we did not know that at the time of recording the episode. So I just want to jump up and say that. Secondly, I do mention being sick in the episode. Uh, it's not COVID and I'm feeling much better. I hope you guys enjoy this episode of Gold Squadron Gaze. Hello, and welcome to the show Gold Squadron Gaze. It's the podcast where two Star Wars-loving gays break down each episode of their favorite Star Wars TV shows, while also being gay as hell. I'm your host, Bradley Brower. I'm your other host, Charles Rogers, uh, coming to you from pre-celebration feeling. <laughs> my, my body fortunately decided that it wanted to be sick before celebration instead of after celebration this time. So, yay. That's good. Yay. I, I'm still planning to be at celebration. We're recording this significantly out from it. So ideally, whatever this is that I've got, whatever probably stress bug that I've got will be over. Uh, I will be at celebration all four days. So that's exciting. If you recognize me somehow, um, you could say hi. I, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess if you follow our TikTok, you know what I look like. That's my roundabout way of announcing that I'll be at celebration all four days. Now I'm thinking, like, do I need to hurry up and make you, like, business cards to, like, take to Celebration Hand out? <laughs> I, you know, some people are doing, like, buttons and things. Some okay. people are doing, like, like, there's other shows that I've seen that are doing some cool promotional stuff. We didn't have time to put anything together, unfortunately. Uh, right. So I, I'm, I'm the promotion, Bradley. Okay. I'm our best foot forward. <laughs> okay, well great so that'll work for us that's yeah no that really fucking inspires confidence in you i know you <laughs> trust me a great deal right uh oh so well, yeah, hey if you, you can make some headlines while you're there maybe you accidentally punch somebody in the face while they're there and it'd be like rogue podcaster punches <laughs> child in the face at star wars celebration over I'll, whether or not I'll corky is obi-wan kenobi's son <laughs> I'll see. I'll see what I can. I'll see what controversy I can stir up. There you go. I'll see if I can go viral. On that. <laughs> That's my hope. My hope. Bradley, before we get started on the topic of today's episode, which is our Obi Wan Kenobi episode zero, we have a few points to address. Uh, specifically, we have three points to address before um, we get started. The first is the thing Charles fucked up. So in our Clone Wars coverage, uh, I incorrectly stated that the canonical death of Shakti was that she got decapitated. Now, I actually tracked down and rewatched the scene because it had been years since I'd seen the little deleted thing. But I did rewatch that scene uh, and she does get stabbed through. So if you watch the actual cut stuff that have been remastered from Revenge of the Sith and you're like wait but she gets stabbed by Anakin yeah I was going off the Lego version where he chops her head off so like the <laughs> Lego version is somehow worse <laughs> I guess yeah I, I don't know how this is but the Lego version is somehow worse so I, I do apologize that was a minor issue that that I got wrong so I am very sorry the second thing that I want to bring up, Bradley, you know how we're discovering people that have fulfilled the Disney trifecta? Yes. So our friends over at Dark Side Divas recently started a show called Marvelous Divas, where they're going through the Marvel Cinematic Universe in chronological order. I know they're insane. I don't know how they're doing it. But they reminded me that Richard Armitage is actually in Captain America, the first Avenger. He is the... Uh, the, the guy that blows up the uh, Captain America like lab where they make him. Okay. Richard Armitage is also in Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. He's in the background. He's playing a Naboo guard named Tonra. 
He has zero lines, but he's in the movie. So I went looking to see if he's been in any Disney films. Right. Now, he has not been in like an animated traditional Disney film, but he was in a movie called Alice Through the Looking Glass, which is the sequel to the live action Alice in Wonderland, which was, I believe, produced by Disney. Let me verify that. Yes, if it was live action, uh, the sequel was, yeah. Yeah, so that one was. He was, yeah, I see that. By, okay. Yeah, that one was produced by Disney. So mm-hmm. Richard Armitage has also completed the Disney trifecta. Yep, huh. he he kind of snuck in there in the background of a few of them, but he's technically done it. Yeah, I see Captain America, and I see. Well, he's also in the Hobbit randomly, but um, he's randomly, the sir, the, he's the co-lead actor of the Hobbit. Whatever, I don't count those movies. Um. Those movies are fine, actually. That's my hot take. Movies are fine. Yeah, and you can see Alice. He's in episode one as Tonra. If okay. you read, the, if you read the Padme books, uh, he, he his character gets more screen time in those. Interesting. But that I love was, how people like that just sneak in. So they just sneak in. It's a lot of background things. It's like the guy in Mandalorian who completed it, like yeah, was just in just the random. background of things. Good for them. Like, it's a lot of, like, small actors who just pop up in things. It's like a that guy actor. Yeah. Kind hmm. of like a that guy actor in TV, where it's like, oh, it's that guy. That guy. Oh, it's that guy. But I also feel like the MCU is one of those things where if you've worked in Hollywood, you're probably going to turn up in it at some point. Yeah. I recently saw a Multiverse of Madness. That sure was a movie that happened. Yep can't believe wanda did nothing wrong that entire movie (laughs) she made no mistakes and everything she did was completely a yes and slay sure bradley bradley does not agree with me on that which is why i'm bringing (laughs) it up to needle him on the show although speaking of um there is no good segue for this ahsoka started Uh, well i thought you were gonna say speaking of yas and slay Speaking Ahsoka. of Yas and Slay, Ahsoka, yeah. <laughs> so we we found out per uh, Twitter and Instagram that in the intervening time, while Bradley and I were on our little break post Clone Wars, mm-hmm. uh, that Ahsoka started filming. Nice. We don't know anything new about it. It's just it's it started filming. They put out a nice little photo of the director's chair with Dave Filoni's hat on it, which was a nice little touch. I thought, which is a nice little touch, yeah. but. Yeah, and then uh, also in the intervening time, there was a Vanity Fair article that came out. Mm -hmm. We will not get into that Vanity Fair article. That is not what this episode is about. (laughs) But it did mention that Ahsoka was coming in 2023. Mm, Yes. Oh, well, there was a little bit of information. Ian McGregor did say uh, his wife was starting filming on Ahsoka. Yeah, he did confirm Mary Elizabeth Winstead is is in Ahsoka because it was right. it was like not officially confirmed by Lucasfilm and Ian mm-hmm. McGregor just confirmed it. It also said that like it had this weird story about the whole Hayden Christensen and Ahsoka thing and like whether or not he's actually in it. Like the article says that Rosario Dawson didn't know Right, like she was unaware, but then she, she was accidentally unaware, tweeted but then it she out. She posted it anyway, and Star Wars was like, "Maybe you need to take that down." Implying so like, that he's not in it, but maybe he that is. He's not yeah, in it, weird. but maybe he is. Yeah, it was. It was. It was an odd wording choice, I'm for sure. If you read the article, yeah. So it looks like our next slate of of stuff is going to be Obi Wan Kenobi, Andor, then Andor. Oh my God, can we talk about Mon Mothma's fucking costume? Oh, that was another random thing. Speaking of like, you know, just TV shows in general, um, they randomly showed us what Mon Mothma looks like in the Andor series and the costume and everything. Not only did they show us what Mon Mothma looks like, they fucking dropped that she's like a co-main character in it. Yeah, it's like a dual show. Like it's and yes, the show is called Andor, but she's like the other character of Andor. Like it's both like, their stories. Listeners, for context. Mon Mothma is one of my favorite characters in Star Wars. <laughs> I think about Contingency Plan probably without hyperbole at least once a day. I love her character so much. And they just randomly dropped, yeah, you're getting that Mon Mothma TV show that you want. 
also it's got Andor, which is a character you also love. Like, what? Love that. <laughs> what you can't do this to me, Vanity Fair. This is this is not fair. Oh. Yeah, they've moved on from like her normal outfits and like oh I I have nothing but good things to say about that costume. It's so beautiful. It's very clean. I was like, okay, she looks really good. I think I think that's supposed to be the contrast. I think they're gonna do like the Andor being on like his home world, which is being like really oppressed by the empire it's really dirty and the empire is like taking advantage of them Mm -hmm. uh interspersed with the halls of the imperial senate where mon moth was trying to do something about this but everything is really clean and pristine i think that's the angle they're going for and honestly i super dig it yeah i like i'm I'm excited to see where that goes because apparently we're getting that at the end of summer so that's interesting too end of summer yeah uh Release date for the Bad Batch win this <laughs> film. I, I'm pro- probably next week. Probably. As of recording this episode, I have put in for the celebration panels, but we won't find out until Monday. The day this episode comes out, we will find out whether or not I got into any of them. Nice. But okay. Bad Batch, probably announcement at that panel. Right. So we won't know until hopefully Kenobi episode one episode drops when <laughs> whenever uh, Bad Batch is going to come out. <laughs> Listeners, Bradley and I, we have complained mightily about the schedule on this podcast. When I tell you that the recording schedule for the week after celebration is probably the most content we have ever recorded in a single week. Yeah, it is a lot. fucking insane how many episodes we are about to record in a very short period of time. Even the Tartakovsky Clone Wars, because those episodes are only like 30, 45 minutes, I think, Ish. Yeah, around that. And these are going to be the full Obi Wan Kenobi episodes. And ugh. we'll try to we'll try to keep them <laughs> close to that hour mark. Like you know, you know, it's it's hard to talk about something that's forty five minutes for two hours because then then you're kind of like going a little overboard. <laughs> uh yeah, looking at you our episode on the Jedi, speaking right. of Ahsoka, where literally <laughs> you and I talked for two and a half hours. Hey, if they give us enough to talk about, I guess you know there's not much you can do about it. I mean well, transitioning over into Obi-Wan Kenobi, we we aren't planning to have any guests for Kenobi, so don't get your hopes up uh, just because the recording recording schedule is going to be so brutal that it it really just needs to be the two of us yeah. however uh transitioning over into obi-wan kenobi we are every time a new tv show comes out or we're about to start something we always do an episode zero where we talk about it a little bit before we get into the season uh this is that i'm gonna go ahead and set the ground rules so bradley is very careful only expose himself to official marketing materials so the trailers any uh, official articles where they did interviews, promotional images, things like that. He only knows that. I follow the rumor mill, so I know things that he doesn't know. We will not be talking about any of those things. So don't expect to hear us talk about uh, the rumored Glove Shido appearance in Obi-Wan Kenobi. Bradley, you're looking at me like you've never heard the term Glove Shido before. Never. Have you never heard the term glup shido? Oh, okay. So a glup shido is. An I like how you're like. Term. We're not going to talk about any of these things. Proceed no, to talk shut about up. these things. We need to address this <laughs> right now. Okay. A glup shido is it specifically? I think it originated on Tumblr and has bled over to Twitter and TikTok. It is a term for a random Star Wars character that basically appears one or two times or is in the background for like ten seconds but that you personally like are absolutely obsessed with. And it comes from a post. It's like Star Wars will put a random character in the background of a shot and fans will be like, oh my God, it's Glup Shido. So for example, my Glup Shido is Admiral Trench from the Clone Wars series. I am obsessed with Bismarck, but he is a spider and also a cyborg sometimes. He has shown up in like, five episodes of the clone wars and literally nothing else 
Okay, so that's kind of like saying like, oh, look, there's a, a gonk droid or something in the background. Is that the same thing? Kind of. Kind of, yeah. Or is kind it like of. seeing Chopper in Rogue One? I'll, I'll, yeah, it's like seeing, Ch- no, well, kind of not really. The character has to be like more obscure. Like they can't okay. be like a main character in something else. I'll use an, actually, I'll use an example from Obi-Wan Kenobi marketing material. Okay. Uh, Forlom is in one of the trailers for this. Right, he was in the official trailer, right? And he just randomly shows up in it. Yeah, yeah he's in the just official randomly trailer. In it. Just okay. randomly, he's in it. Uh, so somebody would who's like super obsessed with Forlom. Right, they're like, oh, like, my, oh god. my god, it's my favorite <laughs> character. He's literally in like one scene in Empire and Strikes Back and right. in like a handful Never of comic again. books. Right. Uh, and that's it. He's in like nothing else. Love that. Transitioning over, let's, let's talk about those trailers. Bradley, yeah. uh, We've gotten two trailers. We've gotten teaser and we've gotten a, a full trailer. What do you think of them? So I remember we were talking about this. I remember a year ago or about a year ago. I think it was around March uh, back when we were doing Mando 2, season two. Uh, we started talking about Kenobi because I think they had released the cast by then. Um, they d- they and, dropped the cast list on us. Yeah. And we were randomly talking about the Kenobi cast list and we were like, what is the story going to be? Who are all these people? Because we obviously we knew Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru and we were like, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? And then we were like, oh, Hayden Christensen and, you know, obviously um, Ian McGregor. And we were like, okay, well, we obviously know who they are. But then everybody else, you know, we were kind of like, hmm, I wonder who these random people are going to be. And I, I, I don't remember what our guesses were, but I don't ever remember guessing like, ooh, let, they're going to do Inquisitors. Like, no. I don't know if that was, I don't think that was ever on my radar. Did not did not expect that and didn't expect two of the inquisitors to be people we've seen before right like i think that's what i was shocked grand about. Yeah. Inqu- the, the grand inquisitor is in this and the fifth brother is in this and we've kind of seen not reva but the the lothian inquisitor mm-hmm. we've kind of seen her before in one issue of like one comic somewhere, someone steals her armor to try to break into Castle Vader. The Thalothian? Is that what you're saying? The Thalothian, yeah. Okay, so not I was talking Reba, about that one too, yeah. Not the two dudes. Right. Uh, the other woman that's not Reva. We've seen her outfit before being worn by someone else. Oh, interesting. In one comic issue, once. Okay, interesting. Because she was the one character when I was going through my uh, cast list to kind of like give everybody their titles. Um, because we still have some question marks, obviously. But I was thinking that that was um, po- I was pausing the trailer. I think it's the official trailer that she's in. Is the Flothian is in that? Um, if you and if some of the promotional wants. images, yeah, like we see <laughs> right. her like meeting in a mm-hmm. like a boardroom, like a boardroom or something. Yeah, with the fucking- fifth brother. The Fortress Inquisitorius is in this, like yeah. There's so many things. It's like hard to say well, that I was I was not expecting this many Inquisitor stuff. I guess that's my point of all of this is to say when we back when we first saw these trailers, I was like, holy shit, they're just doing Inquisitor stuff, which is first of all amazing because I love the Inquisitorius. I think that is one of the best things in Star Wars. Just just a dumb. It's it's so silly, but it's like so great. Like I mean, if you go back, obviously it doesn't really make any sense in the plot of like the original movie like there's all these other mini Darth Vader's running around like that doesn't make any sense but they're also mostly gone by the original trilogy right most of the Jedi are gone by then right like they they've done their job and the Darth Vader comics run the the 2018 2019 actually Mm. maybe 2020 I want to say comics run uh, actually, I do think it was 2018, the comics run. Uh, De- Charles Soul did. Delved a lot into the Inquisitors. Uh, mm. They're big in Fallen Order. We've seen that fortress before. The gotcha. Fortress Inquisitorius is on a planet called, I think, Nur, And we've been to it in Fallen Order. You break into it at the end of the game. Oh, okay. So, I, I hate to spoil Fallen Order for anybody, but... Casual uh, Fallen Order spoilers. Right. So if anybody knows that, I don't know all the details, but I just know that there's two Inquisitors in that. There's two. There's the second sister and the right. ninth sister. That's like the big one, right? The big monster yeah. looking one. Okay. Ninth sister gets yeeted off a tree. That's the uh, big one. 
So we never saw a body on her. Okay, so she could be theoretically running around somewhere. She could be theoretically running around. I don't think they would put her in this show, but she's theoretically... We didn't see a body on her. Got it. Okay. Um, the other Inquisitors we know of, the second sister, she died at the end okay, of the game. Okay, so she, she did. She did. Okay. Um, sorry, Fulcrum Transmissions. Uh, she, she's dead. She's probably okay. dead. Uh, she got pretty definitively killed at the end <laughs> okay, of the game. Okay, 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 okay. Um, um, so she gets yeeted and then now, so Fallen Order takes place how much earlier than this show? It is about eight years, I want to say, before okay. this show, five or eight years, something like that. It's it's significantly before this show takes place. Okay. That was something I checked is like, did this happen first or... I do doubt we'll see Cal Kestis just because... I was going to say, what are the chances that this little boy shows up in this show? <laughs> as much well, now, as I... Well, now he's not a little boy. He'd be a man by this point. So. Listen, listen, like Cameron Monaghan, call me, but I, I don't think they're going to want to deploy him in this because it may limit yep. like future storytelling they want to do with the character. You say that, but knowing how they love their backdoor pilots... What are the chances that this randomly has one episode that he's randomly in that's a backdoor pilot? I don't see. Here's the thing about this. I don't think they will because it's a limited series, but yeah, that's the big thing is I think that it's because of limited series, right? They're not going to want to put anything in it that's not immediately importantly relevant to the show. Gotcha. Okay. They're going to want to keep it pretty streamlined down into here's the story we need to tell about Obi-Wan being hunted by Darth Vader. Can we talk about Hayden Christensen for a moment? Okay. Sir. (laughs) Sir. We really appreciate you coming off of your farm and doing this. (laughs) Coming back to civilization to film more Star Wars. Coming back to civilization to film more Star Wars. There have been so many, first of all, daddy, he's aged so well. But he's been giving all these interviews where he's talked about, like, this dude really loved being Anakin Skywalker. Yeah. And, like, put a lot of thought into it. The The most heartbreaking one for me was, did you see the interview where he found out he got the part? No. So he was living with his roommate at the time. Uh, they were living in an apartment together. And he got the call. He was in bed. Relatable. With his roommate? No. Damn. (laughs) Unfortunately, sorry to burst your bubble. His roommate was out in the main room. This becomes relevant to the story. Christensen's in bed. He gets the call. He like runs out into the main room. And his roommate like asks him what that was about. And Hayden like ignites an imaginary lightsaber. And he says the look on his face just cued his roommate in immediately that he had gotten the part so his roommate goes over to the record player and puts on a star wars soundtrack and lights up an imaginary lightsaber and they have like an imaginary lightsaber fight to the star wars soundtrack (laughs) to celebrate hayden getting cast as anakin i want to like like be like ha that's so cute and funny but also like are they having a lightsaber fight (laughs) wink wink (laughs) it's eh. It is I'm just, just it's just so cute and yeah, funny. Yeah, no, that's adorable. Like, I feel so bad now for the way he was treated. But he's also said that, like, oh, I'm really happy fans are embracing me now. Yeah. Well, and about that does, damn time, people. Right. Well, and it makes sense because you have to think too, like around that time, you know, the people who would have enjoyed those movies were little kids at the time. And guess what? Like those you. little kids, yeah, like me. And they're all grown up now. And yes, they would absolutely love to see Ian McGregor have his own TV show and Hayden Christensen show up again as Anakin slash Darth Vader again. Like, yes, we fucking want that shit. We want more prequel shit. We love that shit. People like you are now grown up enough that you can have your own podcasts. That's exactly right. And you all have to listen to my opinion. You can inflict your terrible opinion on me every week. <laughs> And I just have to sit here and take it. That's That's right. I I do not absolutely have to sit here and take it. No, it is. It is really good to see him return. Hi, daddy. 
Yeah, I'm actually, I was watching, I think there's a, there's a mini uh, video on the Vanity Fair article. They did a little mini kind of video where they're interviewing them and Hayden is talking in that one for like a hot second. He was talking about how he was like, oh, uh, you know, I got a chance to play Anakin, but I never got really a chance to play Darth Vader. I thought that was like kind of the end. And now he's like, oh, here we go. Like, I get to keep going. Now I get he to keep also, going. He also watched Clone Wars and Rebels. Like he went back and he watched all of Clone Wars and Rebels to prepare for the role. That's amazing. Uh, so Hayden, uh, what is your favorite episode of Clone Wars? Who is your favorite member of the ghost crew? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it Zeb? Quickly. Quickly answer these questions for us. Quickly. That's what everybody's going to ask him at celebration. We need to know. Yeah, I, I should get a photo op just so I could ask him, who is your favorite ghost crew member? Right. Why is it? Why is it Zeb? I, I just know in my heart of hearts that it's Zeb. He's going to give you the safe answer and be like, uh, Chopper is my favorite because <laughs> Chopper is amazing. Sir, Chopper, Chopper is no one's favorite except my boyfriend's. <laughs> my boyfriend fucking loves Chopper. I know a all, lot of people who actually love Chopper. All other, they, they actually, Chopper a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people love Chopper. He has not. We're watching through the clone. We're watching through the, the prequel era chronologically now. Yeah. Uh, we just passed the halfway point of Clone Wars. He does not know Chopper shows up in the Bad Batch. I have kept these things from him. Oh, so he will be nice. pleasantly surprised when we get to Bad Batch and Chopper's fucking in it. Yeah, the Hera Chopper episode. Okay, cool. The Hera Chopper episodes. 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 Yeah. Right, because it's part one and part two, technically. When, actually, I do want to talk about Kamali because he was in the trailer. So Kumail which... not Kumail Nanjiani. I, I am so sorry. Um, yeah, I know. I, I did my best, but I, I always see it written. I almost never say it out loud. He was just in the Eternals and oh my God, he's so good in that movie. But also yes. like... Well, he's probably the best part of that. I wouldn't say the best part because there's a lot of really good parts of that movie. The question is, who is he playing? Because we get right. a brief shot of him in the uh, second trailer mm-hmm. and he looks like he's wearing robes of some sort. Right. So I have two theories. Okay, what are your theories? Okay, so theory number one is that he's playing Quinlan Voss. And we're going to see the Inquisitors kill Quinlan Voss in this show. Oh, That's theory one. Well, that's interesting because for all those out there who don't know, I read uh, the book Dark Disciple or listened to it on Audible. Yes, we we finally taught Bradley to read. (laughs) But what's interesting about that is... That would obviously take place before this, and that book is canon, right? So correct. Well, we don't know what happens. He rejoins the Jedi Order at the end of the book, and then we don't right. know what happens to him. In, what happens to him in Legends? He survives Order sixty six. Okay. So that's one theory. Is that that's who he's, he's playing? playing okay. Quinn I, I like it. I like it. Okay. What's your next theory? He's playing Kitster. I like that theory more. I mean, it's a little like it's a little out there, right? I grant you, but that's my theory: is he's playing Kitster. I have a third rant. I mean, it's kind of more closer to the Quinlan Voss theory. Um, I think he's just playing a random Jedi who's just on the run, and that's what brings the Inquisitors to Dantooine. It does not seem like that's a thing the show would do. You don't think so? Okay, so I've talked about in interviews how Deborah Chow, who was director, was very, very careful to make sure everything fits. So if you look, an interview literally as of today, an interview came out with Rupert Friend who plays the Grand Inquisitor. And he talks about how he doesn't want to just do an imitation of Jason Isaac's performance. So he hasn't watched Rebels, but it's very clear from his interview that he is intimately familiar with both the backstory from Rebels and where the character is going. He specifically references the there are some things worse than death line in Rebels, and mentions he knows about the Grand Inquisitor's fate, which was revealed in two issues of the currently ongoing Star Wars run. They've got the Inquisitors right. They've got Inquisitors from other shows. They've. It does not seem like they would just do random Jedi. It seems like if they have somebody around, they're going to do that person. I mean, obviously we don't know, but I'm, I was just saying like it would just, I mean... I, it could still be like theoretically 
Quinlan Voss is the person who brought them to, the, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if he's doing it on purpose or if it's like on accident, but it's like, you know, one of those things. Cause I don't know. Quinlan Voss, again, they made him so randomly like evil all of a sudden in that book. And then it was like, wait, just kidding. I'm not evil, but just kidding. I am evil. Like, I don't know. It was a weird double, double agent kind of situation in that book. And I mean, he seems more of like, comedic humor to me the actor we're, so we're know. not uh we're not we're not here to discuss dark disciple we will do that at some point but right. but i'm saying if he's playing that character i don't know if it fits is that character is what i'm saying it's just uh, or i don't know if he fits that character to me well, he's he's a comedy actor and if you look at his right. episode in clone wars which i just watched he's a very funny character he is okay in that episode i need to rewatch the clone wars version of but yeah just running through the cast list here uh just the 12 that were officially announced uh we have ewan mcgregor as obi-wan kenobi hayden christensen as darth vader moses ingram is our main like recurring antagonist playing reva right the best name because it's so funny to me because it's one letter off from revan interesting do you think they did it on purpose uh Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> she looks fucking badass as hell in the trailer. She looks good. Yeah. Uh, oh my I god. Because I remember when we were looking at her on the cast list, we were confused about who she was playing because she was so high up in the billing, mm-hmm. and we were like, we were like, who? Who is she who is playing? She? Yeah. <laughs> Where she's getting billing above Owen and Baru. Right. We now know it's it's a new character, Reva, the third right. sister. Third sister, I love that. And she's the primary one hunting Obi Wan until Darth Vader gets involved. Right. Which wisely, we haven't seen any of Darth Vader in the trailers or anything. Mm. And in the image of the show, we only have his silhouette. Now he's in the Vanity Fair, and it, he looks like Darth Vader. Yeah, but that's like we know what know Darth, if... we know what Darth Vader looks like. Yeah, I, I was gonna say you guys should take the Vanity Fair photo shoot with a grain of salt because it's like just because he's that's just Darth Vader standing next to her in the photo shoot doesn't necessarily mean like you know anything other than that's Darth Vader (laughs) yeah yeah so I mean she looks stunning she looks good I like it I I find it interesting that she doesn't have um like a helmet or anything um because if we go back and look at all the other inquisitor designs uh at least in rebels and everybody seems to have like a full outfit or something either covering their face or a helmet of some kind yeah the ah uh, yeah she is she, the only she's the one, only one who doesn't she's the only can, one who that doesn't I that i can think yeah. of yeah yeah everybody has like trilla runs around without one for a good chunk of fallen order but she's wearing the helmet when you first meet her got it okay so maybe she takes it off maybe like maybe we'll meet her with it on and either a it gets damaged or b she just takes it off and never puts it back on or something you know what i mean like i don't know it's just a or or they're just not showing it to us yet that's true running through this we have joel edgerton playing uh uncle owen mm-hmm. the the meme lord of the second trailer <laughs> good good lord uncle owen in that trailer um first of all he's shady as fuck (laughs) sir sir i i have not liked uncle owen for 25 years of my life since i saw a new hope but sir you might have to be invited to the brunch just for that line yeah uh bonnie psc sorry Mm -hmm. for the last name bonnie uh i apologize Back is Aunt Beru, so it's good to see them nice. back. With uh, it's not on this cast list, but Grant Feely is going to be playing the young Luke Skywalker. Okay, and all of you are going to leave this child alone. Uh, okay? Do you think we're going to even get more than just that shot in the trailer of him? Probably just a, a little more, but not a lot. Yeah, I, I don't, don't think, think they're, they're going, going to. Too much. But but listen to me for a second, Star Wars fandom. Okay, <laughs> listen. Okay, I know that if you're listening to this show, you're probably not the person I'm talking to. This is mostly for me to get this out into the world, but leave this child alone. He could give the worst, most wooden performance. <laughs> In the entire history of the world, and you're still going to leave this fucking literal child alone. (laughs) Do you understand me? We will not go through the Jake Lloyd thing again, okay? I am watching all of you. Do not start with me. Moving on. Kamal Nanjiani, we've already discussed. He's in the trailer briefly. We don't know who he's playing. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Indira Varma, my queen. She actually does pop up in the trailer in mm-hmm. and in a promotional image. So gotcha. she's like the main Imperial officer character. Right. Which was, I think, a little while ago, I think there was like a leak slash kind of behind the scenes like shot of her. Somebody had like we already knew she was playing it. an Imperial officer. Yeah, Got that it. was okay. a significantly <clears throat> long time ago. Gotcha. Uh, and it's it's confirmed by the trailers. She's playing an Imperial officer character. Nice. Love that. Love lady officers. Rupert Friend playing the Grand Inquisitor. Definitely didn't see that one coming. But Did I not like see it. that one coming. <laughs> I like it, but okay. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, Sung Kang playing the fifth brother, the, the Russian voiced Inquisitor from Rebels. Love that. And then there's three on this list <clears throat> that we don't know yet. Exactly. Who they're playing. Uh, O'Shea Jackson Jr., Simone Kessel, and Benny Safdie are the three people that we don't know who they're playing yet. So I think I know two of them. Okay. So the reason why I think I know Simone is, again, if you pause the oh. official trailer, I think she's the other Inquisitor. Oh, she's the Thalothian. I think so. Yeah, I think she's the Interesting. Uh, okay. Eleven Sister. Is that what it's called? She's the fuck me. I um, guess. Well, I'm just giving her a, a, the last one because it's like we don't know anything past a certain number. So I'm calling her the eleventh sister. We know. She we know what she is. Let's right. let me pull up. This is uh, this is the thing Charles didn't research, uh, but I do believe we know. Well, if you go, this is the go, part Bradley's gonna have to cut out. Well, I mean, if you go like just by like, okay, so in Rebels, we have five, seven, eight. In Fallen Order, we have seven and nine. And then, uh, or I'm sorry, yeah, seven and nine. And then uh, we have four and 10 in the comics, apparently. And then Reva is three. So that would make this one 11 because we don't have any other yeah, numbers we, yet. We know Reva <laughs> is three. Uh... Yeah, that would make sense. Because she's 11. Because is, is she the eighth sister, I think? No, eighth brother. Unless, or do they, I thought they don't. Like, you can't have an eighth brother and an eighth sister, right? I thought it just goes like. Every no, it's, other it's one of each. It's one of each, but there isn't one of each. In my mini little research I did, there isn't any. So I just thought it was like, whatever the next one is, you just call them that. Oh, hell. Yeah, I've completely lost it. I. <laughs> okay. She's somewhere... But I'm calling I, her 11th sister. Sure. Unknown. Yeah, I think you're right. That is Simone Kessel. <laughs> I, that's my think, guess. Who Who do you think is the other one that you know? Um, I, I, this is a more of a far-fetched guess. Um, I think Benny Safdie or whatever, I think he's the robot that we see, or the droid that we you see. You think the he's trailer. the little robot? Or the, well, I don't think he's little, but I think he's the droid in the robot, or the droid in the trailer with like a gun. Or whatever. Uh, um, uh, for long? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. There's a scene, and I think it's in the teaser or the trailer. I can't remember which one. Where the robot confronts a stormtrooper or something, either oh. helping someone get away or something like that. I think he's that robot. Um, mm. That's my guess. I, I just assumed he was playing a droid because I don't see O'Shea Jackson Jr. playing a droid, um, only because he's a pretty big dude. So I don't know if they want to give him like a. I don't even think he's an alien. I don't know what he's going to be because <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, I, at this point. I got, I got nothing on that. Yeah. I have nothing on him. He is going to be our random of the season. Cause I really <laughs> don't know. O'Shea Jackson is glup shit confirmed. Yeah. I don't know who he's going to be. Shoot. He might be another fucking inquisitor that we haven't seen yet. Who knows? Dear like, Lord. Just you know, put all honestly, the, just put all the inquisitors in this. Because if you think about it, 90% of the cast is an Inquisitor. <laughs> so it's Good like, grief. okay, well, great. Good I love grief. it. Yes, as far as the plot goes, I feel like we're only seeing stuff from the first maybe three episodes. If that, yeah. If that. Because they're trying to keep, I'm sure they're trying to keep it tight. Yeah. Like, you know. Obviously, Obi-Wan leaves Tatooine. We don't Which know I like. Why. Well, I mean, I know why. But that was a right. leak, and I'm not going to tell you. Okay. Uh, unless I'm super massively wrong, and then a lot of people besides me are going to be taking a huge L on that. But <laughs> we know he's on Tatooine. We know the Inquisitors show up to Tatooine at some point. I think they follow him back. Interesting, because we see they're both on Tatooine and the new city planet. Thing. Yeah, I, I think he goes to the city planet, and that's where they pick up his trail, and then they follow him back to Tatooine. 
and he has to go deal with that to lead them away from Luke. Interesting. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know what the. I, that's why I like this because I genuinely have no idea. I think what I, I like, have nothing. I have I, nothing. I have nothing. We have no idea. I love it. Um, I love being super surprised like this because I have no expectations. So I. That's what I like about this show. I think I love frantically texting about. you whether or not to go. You know what? Let's just put a blanket, okay, between yeah. you and me. <laughs> Let's just put a blanket statement here. Don't go on social media until you've watched all of the episodes. They will yeah. all be that kind of episode. Oh, I, if, I swear if people on Friday, if you don't watch this back to back, you're going to be very disappointed when you get online. <laughs> oh, it's going to be fucking everywhere. It's, yeah. it's going to be all Especially over the in place. the height of celebration. Every, I mean, oh, can you imagine Lord. people going, like, imagine you wake up on Friday you don't watch this and then you, your, your dumb ass goes to celebration. Like I can't imagine here's, somebody here's going, not I've watched it. So celebration, the first panel is at 11 AM every day and you have to win a lottery to get into that panel. Right. So I've signed up for lotteries for Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday. I looked at, I was like, this looks good, but I know I'm going to be up till 2 AM watching Kenobi yeah. or I'm going to go to sleep and I'm going to get up early and watch Kenobi before anybody else can spoil it for me right. so i was like i i can't reasonably do a panel at 11 i'm not going to get to the convention center until like lunchtime i i'm i mean obviously this doesn't have well here well i'll just use this character because it's just a non-special character but can you imagine somebody walking around like a uh, celebration be like oh my god can you believe forlom died in the first episode like <laughs> <laughs> We really, we really care about the cannon shoots for Lom in the face. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A full solid, like, 10 years before Empire He even back. shows up in Empire, right. Oh, well, I guess Ugh. that's a good point. I guess, yeah, he doesn't show up until Empire, so we know at least he survives uh, whatever episode he's in. Daniel Jose Older wrote a really good one-shot uh, comic about Zuckus and Forlom that, like, I did not care about Forlom at all. I was like, oh, look, um, droid that was in Empire. And then I read <laughs> Daniel Jose Older's stuff, and I was like, oh, I actually care about this droid now. Whoops. It made <laughs> me care. All right. Do you have any final predictions for Kenobi, Bradley? Uh, Off-the-wall oh predictions. Off-the-wall like, predictions? Just- off the wall insane predictions however unlikely i feel like we'll get one satine flashback i don't know if that's possible i don't even because unless she's being kept a super secret like casting wise that's my off the wall prediction is that satine in some shape or form will either be mentioned or show up in this show you know what my off the wall prediction is what satine is not going to be in kenobi She's going to be in Ahsoka and Mary Elizabeth Winstead is playing her. That would make sense from, well, just an easy casting chemistry point, right? Like if you want to film scenes of them together in quote unquote flashbacks or whatever you want to, however you want to do them together in a scene, like they already have the chemistry. So you don't have to worry about that. Like, Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. Um, that would just be a random off the wall thing. If she showed up in this, I don't, you know, that would just be random. I don't know. That's just a stupid random thing. I, my, off the wall randomness thing is that we will see Darth Vader without his helmet on. Um, okay. I don't know if that's, I don't think that's as far fetched, but I think we'll see Hayden Christensen's face at some point. Oh yeah. They did not, they right. did not cast him to put him in a suit. Right. So I, I, my, my strong theory is that he will be either a walking around without his helmet on or some kind of basic, like in the tank talking or like something like in some capacity, we will see him without his helmet on, either talking to somebody or being like, yo, I don't need my suit. I'm still just as good without this thing. I'm still 25 years old, 30 years old at this point. I don't even know how old he is at this point, but. Uh, he's in his 40s. Well, yeah, because he's like, he's only 22 when he turns into Darth Vader. So <laughs> Yeah, he's in his 40s at this okay. point. Yeah, because this he's is like... what? No, because he dies at 45. Oh, yeah, he's in his 30s. Yeah, so he's only in his mid <laughs> 30s at this point he's in so, his mid 30s oh yeah Lord so, in heaven. and he still hasn't faced off with ahsoka yet in rebels so my my insane off the wall theory is we will get a small background cameo uh from either one Pelimato 
or one Dr. Mandible. I swear to God, I hope Pelimoto is in this show so much. Pelimoto like, or me. Dr. Mandible will be in this. I want Pelimoto. And now that you say yeah. it out loud, I want it. I want it. I want they'll it. Just it be what, like she's a, a kid, right? Frizzy, yeah, they'll just be like a frizzy haired kid in the background. Oh my. Well, well, maybe a teenager. I don't know how old she is in Mando, but. Yeah, like a frizzy haired teenager or something in the background. Like she showed oh up God, please. in the background of that one episode please. of Book of Boba Fett. Please. It would just keep the the joke ongoing that she's in every single star wars tv show i i Pelimoto, really need them to do that pelimoto is the real main character of star wars confirmed well it's funny because i want her to be what rosario dawson was in the netflix marvel shows like she was oh, that yeah, where easter she... egg character i want i want pelimoto to be that character she shows. just shows up in everything she's just there she just happens to be in every show that she just, just happens just to be in every show Right. She's like, oh, you need some help with this, sir? Like, <laughs> So yes, Bradley and I uh, shortly here will we'll be starting up our uh, chronological run of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we will get to the... That was a joke. We would absolutely not do that. No. God, no. We would do Teen Wolf. Yeah, that's a little bit more palatable. There's only no, five would, seasons, so... We would do Teen Wolf. Oh, they're doing a movie now. Right. I would do I would do all the all the episodes and then the movie and then be like, all right, we're never talking about this again. <laughs> Let's just get this out into the ecosystem. So listeners, if you want to hear us do a chronological watch of the show Teen Wolf, God. please let us know. Give us money. Not that we don't have enough on our plate with all these Star Wars upcoming shows, but you know. Well, we are, I will say we've mentioned several times that we are looking at doing stuff. We are kind of waiting until after Kenobi. Well, I have two pilots that I'm working on for content. And my plan is after Kenobi, I'm going to do both of those. And we're going to see which one or both we want to launch. So stay tuned for that. We just have to get through Kenobi first. Dear Lord, that we well, it's, recording well, now like that it, four now episodes. It's only, well, now it's only five weeks, so that's not that bad. Um, it's gonna feel shorter than it is, but Bradley, I'm moving in the middle of Kenobi. <laughs> I am moving across town. I live in Los Angeles. I am going to be dying. Well, maybe you can sneak into the Ahsoka set while you're uh, while you're moving and get us some inside scoop. Yeah, I'm gonna just drive it in my U-Haul truck. Uh, yep. no, I'm I have totally, a delivery. Su- totally supposed to be here. <laughs> I have, I have a, delivery. a delivery for Dave Filoni. Delivery for Dave Filoni. It's a truck full of hats. All right. I have his truck of hats. Oh my God. Well, we will see, um, a week from tomorrow. We will see a week from tomorrow, uh, whether or not our predictions about the Obi-Wan Kenobi show were correct. Uh, and I will be at celebration a week from today uh, as of recording this episode. It'll be this week as of when this episode comes out. So, right. So, yeah, this Friday, everybody will be have seen Kenobi whenever this comes out. Come scream at me at celebration about please don't scream at me. Uh, I'm don't very scream, anxious. <laughs> but you can be like, See, you were wrong about that character being that yeah, character. Find me at Celebration and yell at me about how wrong I was about Obi-Wan Kenobi. All righty. Well, next week we will begin our coverage of Obi-Wan Kenobi. As far as the schedule goes, our first episode of coverage for Obi-Wan Kenobi will be slightly delayed due to Celebration and the scheduling conflicts which prevented Bradley from being able to attend Celebration, we will get it out either late Monday or Tuesday of the week after. So keep an eye out for that episode. Keep an eye out for episode two of Kenobi later in that week. And there will also be an additional bonus episode about everything that I saw at Celebration, whatever I was able to get into whatever I was able to pick up from the floor. So that is coming. It's going to be a big month for Gold Squadron Gaze. All right, please run the socials. I need to take a nap now. Thank you for listening to Gold Squadron Gaze. Did Charles fuck something up? Email us and let us know at goldsquadrongaze at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Gold Squad Gaze, and you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Gold Squadron Gaze. Subscribe to us on YouTube at Gold Squad Two Days, where we post this podcast as well as exclusive video content. Please join us next week and every week for another episode of Gold Squadron Games. Yeah, be like O'Shea Jackson Jr. is 
clearly playing Mace Windu in this. Because <laughs> you're I like, have nothing wait. funny to say about that. <laughs> you're like, wait, mm, maybe Ocean Jackson <laughs> Jr. is a young Mace Windu. Hmm. Or maybe his unbeknownst to us son that we've never Dear met. Lord. And then he's Dear trying to avenge God. his father. Dear uh, God. And looking for Boba Fett. Okay, I'm, to I'm gonna him. stop you right there. <laughs> you're done. <laughs>